You know, there have been many throughout history that claim to be amazing in some way or another. And just like Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest, many others have boasted about themselves, said, I am the smartest, or I am the most powerful. But before any of these people had a claim to greatness, before any of them had a chance to boast about who they were or what they had done, there was the one person who said, I am. Sorry. His statements of I am, his statements of who he was, were like no other. They pointed to himself, describing his very character and essence, and he is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the bread of life. He is the true vine. He is the light of the world. He is the good shepherd, he is the watcher of the sheep, and he is the resurrection and the life. He is the I am. remember uh, the old TV show called Candid Camera? You guys remember that? I'm kind of showing my own age, uh, I think, when I, I talk about that show. Uh, but, but I think you guys know, if, in, in case you're new, you don't know what that show was, it, it was a show where they would set up these cameras, right, in, in certain places, and then they would do some kind of outlandish thing uh, to try to capture people's reactions on camera uh, in there. And so it was kind of a, a, a crazy type of a, of a, of a show uh, there. Uh, they, they had this one episode one time though where they, they set up a camera inside a, a counselor's office at this like prestigious New York City high school. Uh, one of those, you know, uh, you had to you know, get acceptance to be into the school type thing, you know, and, and all that. So the, the, what they did, they, they gave all of the students in the school, they gave them this career aptitude test. And then they set up these cameras in the counselor's office to, uh, as they brought in the students, to go over the test with the students to tell them what their careers might look like. And so uh, they, they brought in one of the, 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 the more prominent, popular guys in the school, and uh, they set him down there at the counselor's desk to, to give him the report of his test. And of course, this kid, you know, he kind of walked in kind of with this little bravado, you know, he kind of, you know, a little cocky. I'm, I'm sure that this kid was probably thinking that they were going to tell him that he was going to be some future CEO or, you know, he was going to be some, you know, bank financier or something like that, or maybe working on Wall Street, you know, he's there in New York City. I'm sure he thought something big was coming. And the counselor said, son, your test shows that you're going to be best suited to be a shepherd. The boy looked at the counselor and he's like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know, and look, in, in, in our modern tech savvy generation, a shepherd is not something that's a desired uh, career, if you will. To, to, to many of us, you know, today, a, a shepherd is just some lowly type person from, you know, like ancient Bible time type history, you know, and, 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 that, and it's, it's just somebody that, you know, they just kind of stumbled into this and somebody who never quite made it in life. And so they become a shepherd, you know, and, and, and that's our thought. That's our thinking when we think about somebody being a shepherd in there. But, but listen, that idea is completely, completely wrong. In fact, some of the greatest people in Bible history were shepherds, right? Abel was a shepherd. Joseph was a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. David was a shepherd. Just to name a few. So, so this idea that we have about being a shepherd there, it's, it's, it's kind of contrary to, to really what the Bible shows us as it was. was. And, and, and as we're going to see today, Jesus Christ, who, who was a carpenter by trade, actually compared himself... To being a shepherd. He said in John chapter 10 and verse number 11. He said I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life. 
for the sheep. Now, as we jump into this, this next I am statement of Jesus, and we look at this thought that Jesus says that I am the good shepherd. Can I just tell you this? This could be one of the sweetest, one of the most, most tender of the I am statements that, that Jesus makes. We've looked now over at, at three of the I am statements that, that Jesus made here in the book of John. And, 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 and we learned in week number one that, that as the bread of life, we, we, we saw that Jesus, he satisfies. In week number two, we talked about how Jesus, as the light of the world, he sanctifies. We talked last week online that Jesus, as, as, as the door of the sheep, as the gatekeeper of the sheep, if you will, Jesus saves. But here today in this statement that Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, I want you to, to see today that this reveals Jesus' sacrifice. It reveals his sacrifice. We'll discuss this more in a bit, but... Did you notice what that statement said there? He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That doesn't sound too much like a lowly job to me, you know. Usually somebody that puts their life on the line for their job, that's somebody that's kind of held in high regard, right? We, we look at those people as, as pretty highly respected, that they would put their life on the line for their job in, in there. But, but what does Jesus mean here? What does he mean when he says he's the good shepherd and that he lays down his life for the sheep? I mean, last week we, we talked about how Jesus was the door of the sheep. You remember this? I'm sure all of you do. We, we, we talked about how, how, how shepherds, they, they have to lead their sheep, right? Be, because sheep do not have an, uh, the internal homing instinct that, that many other animals possess. One, one that helps them to navigate back to their original home. At, at nighttime in, in the countryside, the, uh, a shepherd would have to lead his sheep uh, uh, back home and, and, and put them into a pre-built shelter that, uh, uh, or, or make a sheep fold, if you will, to, to corral the sheep at, while they slept. And, and the shepherd would bring them in there. We, we mentioned how the sheepfold would have, would have been, you know, a simple in design. It probably just would have been a circle type of a thing. It would have been made with small rock uh, uh, there. Or they would have used sticks or thorns and, and, and that type of thing. It's, and it would just have a very small opening so that nothing could get in or out. So then the, the, the shepherd would, would lay in that opening and, and he would protect the sheep so that nothing could come in and get the sheep. But also so that none of the sheep could get out and, and, and escape and, and be on their own. So the shepherd would be the gate or the door. But in this same passage here, John chapter number 10, where Jesus talks about being the gate or the door of the sheep, he then takes it a step further and he tells everybody now that he's the good shepherd. So what I want to do today is I want to see what this teaches us about who Jesus is today. Three things here today. Number one is this. As the good shepherd, Jesus reveals his character. He reveals his character. Listen, th throughout the Old Testament, God is referred to as the shepherd of his people. David said in Psalm 23 that the Lord is my shepherd. I I Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 11, he said, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. Ezekiel mentioned in Ezekiel 34 verses 11 uh, through verse 16, he, he talks about how God will search for my sheep. And now Jesus is standing here among the people. In John chapter number 10 in the New Testament, and, and Jesus is standing there and he declares to the people, I am the good shepherd. And please, can I emphasize the fact he says he's the good shepherd. He's good. He is Good. Nahum chapter 1, verse number 7, it says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. Please understand that Jesus, God, is the only one who is good. <clears throat> He's the only one who's good. In Matthew chapter number 19, we, we read these words. It says, And behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you will enter life, keep the commandments. There's only one that's good, and that's God. He's the only one that's good. The Greek word kalos, the word that's translated good, it describes that which is noble, wholesome, good, and beautiful. I want you to know this is the character of God. This is, this is who God is. He alone is good. We use that word a lot. You know, he's a good dude. He's, he's a good guy, right? He, he, she's a good lady. 
We say it a lot, but you understand, in, in, in all reality, we are not good. When it comes down to it, we, we are not good. In fact, the Bible even tells us in the Old Testament that, that apart from Christ, all of our quote-unquote good deeds are nothing more than filthy rags. And there's a whole meaning behind that we won't get into today. But it's nothing but filthy rags. Our goodness, apart from Christ, we have no good in us. There is only one good, and that is God. He alone is good. The, 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 there are actually three New Testament references to Christ as the, as the shepherd. And, uh, the first one there the, in, in, in our text here, John chapter number 10, where, where he's the good shepherd who's dying for a sheep. Um, in there, number two, uh, in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20, he's the great shepherd who is risen for his sheep. Look what it says there. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant. And number three, in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, we see that he's the chief shepherd who's coming for his sheep. And it says, and when the chief shepherd appears, you receive the unfading crown of glory. You see, the good thing, a beautiful thing, I guess, if you will, is, is that we can know this good shepherd as our own. That's the beautiful thing about it. We have no goodness in us, but we can know who is good. We can know Jesus, and because of that, we can be imparted with his goodness, if you will. Jesus is the only one who, who ever has, ever will uh, live a sinless life. He's the only one that can be considered good. He kept and he fulfilled the commandments perfectly. Here's a fun, fun fact for you. The original Saxon meaning of our English word God is the good. That's the original meaning, the good. You see, God is not only the greatest of all beings, he's the best. He's, he's the best of it all. Everything that comes from God, think about this, in, in, in who God is, when you're thinking about his goodness, everything that comes from God, everything, his creation, his laws, his provision, his plans, it cannot be anything but good. It can't be anything but good because of the goodness of of God because of who he is. The psalmist said in Psalms 119 and verse 68, he says, you are good and do good. We cannot make this claim of goodness because we've sinned, right? We have done wrong. We, we are a sinful being. But even in our sinful states, we see the goodness of God. We see the goodness. When, when Adam and Eve, when they sinned in the Garden of Eden, you know, God, he, he could have very well just stripped away every blessing from us. You understand that? Because we deserved nothing. He could have stripped everything away from us. He, he could have taken every blessing. He could have taken every comfort. He could have taken every pleasure out of our lives. But instead, Jesus got, he, he brought a balanced system of love and justice. That's the goodness of God at work. We don't deserve anything. We don't deserve any good at all. We don't deserve any blessings. We don't deserve any comforts. We don't deserve any pleasures in this life. But God, he brought this balanced system, this, this balance of, of love and justice, this balance of mercy and judgment. And so now, for all of us who, who call upon the name of the Lord, those of us who are forgiven of our sins by Jesus Christ, we are seen as good through the eyes of God. But it's only through Jesus that we can have any claim of this goodness. It's only through him. A.W. Pink, he's a, a theologian who writes a lot of books. This is what he said. He said, the goodness of God is the life of the believer's trust. The goodness of God is the life of the believer's trust. It is this excellency in God which most appeals to our hearts. He goes on to talk about in that statement, he, he, he goes on to talk about how, man, as, as Christians, we, we, we've got all the goodness in the world because through Jesus Christ. And this ought to be what motivates us. This ought to be what gets us up out of bed each and every day. It's the goodness of God that's upon our lives. That's what should sustain us. The goodness of God. Jesus is the good shepherd. He reveals his character to us. Number two. As a good shepherd, Jesus reveals his care. He reveals his care. If you look there in, in the text there in John chapter number 10, in verse 11 there, he talks about how he's the, the, the good shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. But I want you to look there at verse number 12. It says, he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming 
and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. So here we see in this passage, Jesus, he's not just some hired help, is what he's saying. He, he's not just somebody who, who's not invested in this. He's not somebody who's just working to collect a paycheck, if you will, who has no attachment to the sheep at all. When, when, when a hired hand, when, when they sense danger, they flee, right? They, 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 they forsake the sheep because his, self, his own self-interest is more important than the sheep's self-interest. You understand that? People that, that had no investment, they, they, they'll, they'll just scatter when it gets tough, when it gets rough. They, they just scatter. But, but Jesus, he cares. He's not just some hired hand. He's not just somebody who's just only going to be there when things are good. He cares about us. He's a good shepherd. He cares about the sheep. He remains there. He fights for his sheep because they belong to him. Because they belong to him. Good shepherd cares. We belong to Christ. Do you get that? We belong to Christ. Scripture even tells us you were bought with a price, right? Jesus is invested in us. And he's going to be there to fight for us and to care for us and to guide us and, 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 and protect us in and, and, and all of this. Jesus, he, he takes responsibility for us and, and even to the extent of, of sacrificing his own life for our protection and for our, our welfare, for our benefit. That's what Jesus does. In this passage, he's revealing his care for us. You see, the Israelites, they would have been familiar with how David, as, as a young shepherd boy, how David risked his life. And, and remember when David, uh, there when he was about to fight Goliath, he talked about how he, he fought against a bear and he fought against a lion there in First Samuel chapter 17. He talked about how, how he would do that. So the, the Israelites, they would be, would be familiar with that. But Jesus, he, he, he goes beyond the example of David by, by voluntarily giving up his life for us. He takes it a step further. He served as a sacrifice for our sins. And he's defending us from our enemies, from Satan and from evil in this world. The sacrifice of the good shepherd laying down his life for, for you and me, it demonstrates the immense love and care that God has for us. He's the good shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. He's not some hired hand here. He lays down his life for us. Romans chapter 5, verse number 8, it says, But God commended his love for us, and, and, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He was willing to lay down his life. A good shepherd, he knows his sheep. And Jesus knows you. And by entering into the door of Jesus, like we talked about last week, by entering into the door of Jesus, you can know God. You can know your shepherd. He says, my sheep know me. They know my voice. And so when Jesus declared, I know my sheep there in verse number 14, he's emphasizing his ownership. He's emphasizing his, his watchful care of us. And please understand that as God is watching over us, don't forget that he's good. He's not just watching, but he's, he's faithfully watching because he's good. And so everything that happens here is happening for a purpose, for his goodness in our lives. I want you to look at in John chapter 10. Just, I just want you to see how, how he cares for us. In verse number 3, it states there in John 10 that he speaks to us and that he calls us by name, that he, that he leads us. Look what it says there. To him, the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. In verse number 4, he also goes before us, leading us in and clearing a path for us. It says, when he has brought us out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Verse 12 and 13, we just read there, it talks about there that, that he protects us. Verse 13 says that he stays with us. We read those verses. And of course, verse 27 and 29, he gives us eternal life. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. You need to understand this. There is nobody on this earth who 
cares for you more than Jesus Christ. There's nobody who cares for you more than Jesus Christ. Listen, not your mama, not your dad, not your siblings, not your spouse, not your children, not your best friend, not even your pastor cares for you more than Jesus does. Nobody cares for you and loves you more than Jesus because he's your good shepherd. This week I was doing a, a, a YouVersion Bible study with a friend of mine. And I, I, I want to read to you one of the devotions in this study and what it said. This is what it said. It said, it is impossible to exaggerate God's love. It is impossible to exaggerate God's love. From all eternity, God has been and always will be pure, unrestrained, relentless, infinite, faultless, beautiful love. We were designed to desire a love as great as this. And because of Jesus, we can all experience the love that we were created for. A love that can only be found in a relationship with God. The Bible tells us that God is love. You can know his love, rely on his love, and live in his love. Amazing. And God's love is not just general in nature. It is also deeply personal and directed specifically towards you. You are the target of God's love. It would go on later in the devotion to say this. Remaining in God's love positions you to receive all God has for you and helps you to see yourself in the world around you like he does. God's love is a love that can be fully trusted, wholeheartedly explored and experienced, and can impact every area of your life as you walk with him. That's who God is. That's how much he cares for you. That's how much he loves you. You can't exaggerate it. This is the care that the good shepherd has for you. But there's one more thing I want you to see. As a good shepherd, we see his character. We see his care. But most importantly, as the good shepherd, Jesus reveals his cross. He reveals his cross. Listen, to, to better understand the purpose of a, of a shepherd during... Uh, the, the, the times of Jesus, it, it's, it's really helpful to realize that, that sheep are, are utterly defenseless animals. I hope you understand that. They're, they're totally dependent upon the shepherd. Sheep are dependent upon them. Sheep are always subject to danger. They, they are, if you will, at the, at the bottom of the food chain, if you will. They, they, they must always be under the watchful eye of the shepherd as they graze. Uh, man, let's rushing walls of water, you know, if it, if it were to start storming and start raining and, and water were to, were to head down a hill into a valley, listen, it could take the sheep and it could sweep them away and they could be lost uh, in there. Robbers could come and steal the sheep because they're defenseless. Wolves or other animals could come and attack the flock. They are completely dependent upon the shepherd to take care of them and, and, and protect them there. And so we mentioned earlier about how David, you know, he, he killed a lion, he killed a bear. They, they were always... Vulnerable. Driving snow in the winter. Blinding dust. Burning sand in the summer. Long, long, long hours. Shepherds would work. Protecting these sheep. Protecting them. Making sure that they were, they were cared for. And patiently enduring for the welfare of the flock. In fact, shepherds were frequently subjected to, to, to great danger. Sometimes even shepherds would give their life to protect the sheep. And likewise, please understand that Jesus gave his life on the cross as the good shepherd for his own. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You see, through his willing sacrifice, Jesus made salvation possible for everybody to come to faith. This is what Jesus did. In our text, they're proclaiming that, 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 that Jesus is, is the good shepherd. Jesus, he, he spoke of laying down his life for the sheep. Look there in, in, in John chapter 10 and verse number 15. It said, just as, as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 17 and 18, it says, for this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Please understand this. Jesus' death was divinely appointed. Nobody took Jesus' life. Nobody killed Jesus. 
Jesus willingly laid down his life. He did that for us. Because of his goodness. Because of his care. He, he laid down his life. And taking it even further, Jesus makes it clear that it wasn't just just for the Jews that he laid down his life. That's a beautiful thing about it. It wasn't just for the Jewish people. It wasn't just for the Israelites. But it was also for the other sheep that are not of this, of this fold. If you look at verse number 16 there, he says, Other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. That other sheep that he's talking about, it clearly refers to Gentiles, people who are not Jews. And as a result, Jesus is the good shepherd over all, both the Jews and and the Gentiles, anybody who will come, who will believe in him. These verses show us that the good shepherd has authority over his sheep. But look at what he says in verse 27 and 28. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Look, if you've not gotten anything from this message today. Please understand this. The good shepherd provides great security at the door of salvation. The good shepherd provides great security at the door of salvation. This is the, the character of God, that he is good. This is the care of God that he would watch over you and give his life for you. And this reveals his cross, that he would lay down his life for you. Did, did, did you know that sheep, they have a strong instinct to follow the sheep in front of them? That's the way sheep are, just, just naturally. When, when one sheep decides to go somewhere, the rest of the flock usually follows, um, even if it's, if it's not a good decision. It's, it's just what, what sheep do. For example, sheep will, will actually follow themselves to the slaughter. That's, that's what sheep will do. If one sheep jumps over a cliff, it's likely that the rest of them will follow that sheep. It's, it's where they are. Even from birth, lambs are actually conditioned to follow the older members of a flock. This instinct, it's, it's hardwired into sheep. So it's not even something that they think about. They just go. They, they just do. And in fact, in, in, in 2005, in, in, in the country of Turkey, we saw something like this happen. One sheep actually jumped off of a cliff or walked off of a cliff. And then the next thing we know, these, these Turkish shepherds, they, they just stood and watched uh, there as 1,500 sheep went over the cliff. They all just followed along. This is a real story that happened. What happened was these, these shepherds, they, they had left the, the, the flock on their own, and they went to go eat breakfast. And, and so then one of the sheep just started wandering and went over the cliff, and 1,500 of them followed. In the end, 450 of the sheep died by walking off of this cliff. You say, well, what happened to the other 1,100? They got cushioned from the sheep. And so when they fell off, they fell onto a big pillow, basically, uh, in there. And so they survived there. And, 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 and so, but this really happened. And listen, the estimated loss to the families who owned these sheep it topped $100,000. All of that money lost because shepherds who left their flock, some hired hands, if you will, who didn't care for the sheep. You see, this is why shepherds matter. But most importantly, this is why you need a good shepherd. So if anybody ever looks at you and says, you'd be a good shepherd, your response really should be, you got to be joking. Because only Jesus is the good shepherd. Only Jesus is the one who has the character and the care and the willingness and the authority to lay down his life for his sheep. That's who God is. That's who Jesus is. He is the good God, I thank you this morning that we can see so much in such a little statement that he is the good shepherd. God, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for his willingness to be the good shepherd, for his willingness to care for me. I thank you for his willingness to lay down his life for me. And God, I understand I don't deserve anything. 
because of my sinless uh, nature and, 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 and who I was before Christ, I deserved nothing. But oh, you're so good. As that song says, you're a good, good father. And God, you lavish us with your goodness and, and, and your grace and your love and your justice, your, your mercy and your judgment. God, you, you have set up this, this balanced system because you care for us. God, I thank you that, that Jesus loves us so much that, that even as other scripture we didn't even dive into today, uh, it shows us that, that, that if we were to go astray, that Jesus being the good shepherd would lead the 99 and he'd go find the one that's lost because he cares for us that much as our good shepherd. God, I pray that today this would, this would encourage us to live in your goodness to trust in your care for us, to trust that you are good, to trust that everything that, that, that takes place in this life and everything that, that happens to us, it's, it's ultimately, it's, it's for our good. May we just be encouraged. May we just lean on you. God, may we do our best to listen to your voice, to know your voice as our shepherd, and to follow you everywhere you lead us. Lord is my shepherd. I shall not warn. God, it's in your son's name we do pray today.